How's everybody doing tonight? It's your boy Newborn with the UGD Ministries Most High Mondays. I'm going to give it a couple minutes and uh, see if we get some people pop up on here. The word we're going to be going over tonight uh, is kind of inspired by Anon's Fruitful Friday from last week was uh, being prepared. And so um, I just wanted to go over tonight on attacks from the enemy. Because believe that, the enemy is going to be attacking constant battle. It's constant warfare. Um, so we want to be prepared. We want to uh, know what to do to be ready for when we are attacked. Um, so just going to give it a couple minutes, see if uh, we get any good people on here. And if not, I'm just going to continue on and we will um, just keep pushing through. And then uh, people can replay if they, if they want to watch later. So I hope everybody had a good day today. Uh, it was a slow day for me at the office. Um, had a, such an action-packed weekend. Uh, great things happened this weekend. The Lord was just blessing. Uh, blessing after blessing. Getting a driver's license, then a car, then a free Christian rap show at City Fest. That was an amazing thing. And then uh, me and Mike, Kingdom Disciples, got to uh, do one of our Christian rap songs a music video with Lone Cam. Um... Uh, it's going to be great. Holy Spirit, it's going to be coming out pretty soon. A uh, great way to glorify the Father. What's up, babe? So, yeah, it was a really fruitful weekend. So, um, we are going to um, just get going here in a minute. So, like I said tonight, we're going to be going over attacks from the enemy and be prepared because it's a constant onslaught the devil's always at he's always at your heels uh always trying to bring you down so uh we just got to be prepared for that and i got a few uh scriptures it's going to be a short lesson tonight but i got some scriptures uh that can that can uh give us some information on that and um i also have um some other things prepared uh just some insight and uh, different angles for uh, to discuss that the enemy will uh, used to attack us uh, hi so anyways i think i'm just gonna get right started anyway and um people can join us or rewatch it as we go so first i'm gonna start us off with some prayers so dear heavenly father lord we uh come to you tonight tonight lord and we just uh thank you for everything you do for us in our lives lord um we just thank you for all the gifts that you give us, Lord, and all the blessings you uh, allow us to have, Lord, um, whether it be um, family or friends or gifts, music, Lord, whatever it is. We just appreciate everything you do for us, Lord. We also appreciate you for giving us the gift of uh, ministry, Lord, to be able to uh, minister to other people and speak uh, of your son, Lord, and teach people about Jesus, um, Lord, we just thank you so much for that. We thank you so much for your son, and we just thank you for so much for being a truthful, good God. Um, Lord, I just ask you tonight to give me wisdom. Lord, just uh, fill me with your Holy Spirit, Lord, and, and direct me and guide me in what direction you want me to go, Lord, with this. Um, guide my tongue, Lord. Just order my steps, F Heavenly Father. Um, we just thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, so here we go. We've got... A second person on here now so hi so tonight like i said is going to be attacks from the enemy so i'm pretty sure everybody's aware that that is a, a thing that's that's going to happen and it does happen and the enemy wants to see you struggle in every situation you do he wants to take you away uh, as quickly as he can from god and uh he wants to fill you full of lies so um we have all been attacked by the enemy before whether it was physically or mentally, it affects us in some negative way. Without God, it's like going into battle without armor. What's up, Dylan? How you doing, brother? The Bible and the helmet of salvation can be our best defense against our enemies. Evil comes in many shapes and form. And in the Bible, the Apostle John warned us to not believe every spirit we hear because they may be evil. So we definitely just got to be careful of that because... Um, we have the ability to hear the spirit and to hear God, but there's also other spirits out and they could definitely be leading us astray. So if you have any doubt on whether or not you're hearing of 
actually of the Holy Spirit or God, uh, sit, pray, and meditate on it, and the Lord will give you confirmation when it is time for you to make that decision. So just know that there can be other spirits whispering it. So um, bad things, the devil will try to confuse you. The more we read the Bible, the more we can discern the truth from error. That's very true. It would be easier if we could see the foes all the time, but unfortunately we cannot. So we're fighting a battle with things that we cannot see and principalities and spirits that we cannot see, but we know they're here. We must test or try the spirits to see if they are truly of God. We've got to make sure that we're hearing God's voice and that we are listening to the spirit and not from the enemy. Easier said than done, right? But it is always good to be aware, so we just definitely want to be aware. Be still and silent if you're not sure if it is the Holy Spirit speaking to you. Rest on it. Meditate on it. Pray on it. Um, hi, hey, what's going on, Brandy? How you doing? It's all good. So if, if you're not 100% sure what you're hearing, if, if you're asking for God to guide you and you do not know for sure if it is the Lord. Hi, Ashley. How you doing tonight? If you don't know for sure if it's the Lord that's uh, speaking to you, don't make a rash decision off that. Don't just jump into it and make a spur-of-the-moment decision. That could be a misleading or guiding spirit. That could be the enemy trying to lead you astray. So just meditate and pray on that. And like I said, the Lord will give you confirmation, and he will send you in the right direction. Do not fret. Everything God has planned for you is for your good. So whether you know, know that or not, or you can understand it in his timing, it is for your good. So... First things first, we're going to go Ephesians 6.11. First thing we need to do in attacks from the enemy, because like I said, it's going to be a constant battle. We are in constant war. The, the devil is always after us. The devil wants to see us go away from God. He wants to see us lose our faith. He wants to see us lose eternal life, and he wants to see us in hell. So we, we're given some certain things. We're given an arsenal of different things that the Lord has provided us with uh, for weaponry, pretty much, or protection against uh, these attacks from the enemy. And there's different things. That... Josiah, please stop. So there's different things we have. But the first and foremost is the, is the armor of God. I'm sure you guys have heard of the armor of God before, but we're going to briefly go over it. And I'm going to explain to you these different things that the Lord has provided for you to uh, keep you out of harm's way from the, from the devil. So... Ephesians 6 1. Put on the whole armor of God. 6 11, excuse me. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. So the Lord's provided you with this armor for you to be able to stand against the schemes because it's a constant battle. We want to constantly always be have our armor on. I'm talking going to sleep with your armor on. You want to be in the shower with your armor on. You want everywhere you go, you want to be prepared because uh, the devil's going to try to get you at your weakest moments. So, what does that consist of? And we're going to break them down. The belt of truth. That is a, the belt of truth. If you're strapped with the belt of truth, then that means that you are opposite of the devil. The devil spreads nothing but lies. If you have your belt of truth on, you will know truth. You will speak truth. You will live truthfully. And that itself, in itself is uh, going to help defeat the devil. The devil lives in lies, and the devil is going to try to lead you astray through lies. So you just want to be secure and sure that you are um, living in truth. So that is well, a very important piece of weapon, I mean armor right there, is the belt of truth. If you're living in truth and you know the truth, then you will not be led astray by the devil's schemes and lies, and you will be uh, producing good fruit yourself in truthfulness. So that's a great thing. We want to be truthful in all times. Hi, Ariel. How you doing? So we definitely want to have that belt of truth on. So there's one piece of armor we have against... Um, oh, what's up, Josiah? There's one piece of armor we have right there that's a very important one Uh to keep us from these attacks from the devil. Like I said, the enemy is going to constantly attack us from every angle where it's going to hurt the most. So we want to be prepared. The breastplate of righteousness. Now the breastplate, that covers uh, your whole breast area, which is, it covers all your vital organs. And it's, uh, I mean, if you get hit in your vital organs, your heart, you're through, you're, you're done. So it's a, that's a really important piece of uh, armor right there. And we're going to armor ourselves with righteousness. So if we are living in righteousness, we do not have to worry about 
I mean, I'm not saying we don't have to worry about sin because we are all sinners. But if we are guarded with the breastplate of righteousness, what's up, Don? How you doing, sister? Um, if we have that on us, we will be protected with righteousness and things that are good. The enemy will try to be attacking us with, of foul nature things and bad things, and we will be able to reflect those with our with our righteous behaviors because we will, will not fall victim to his uh, schemes and his lies and plots because we will be producing righteous fruit. We will be trying to live the right way in every step that we're doing we're going to be uh, doing it with righteous intent so that right there is going to protect you and it's going to protect your vital organs your heart and your um your lungs and and all sorts of different stuff that goes your breastplate is going to protect and that's just a great thing so if we're living in righteousness we're going to be following jesus and that's 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 the true righteousness right there so we've got truth what's up mike uh hey how's it going brother keenan so we've got the belt of truth and the blessed breastplate of righteousness so um that's two pieces of armor so far in our arsenal that we've got to ward off the attacks from the enemy so we're gonna have truth and righteousness and that's gonna be a real big factor against somebody who's very untruthful and who does sin and does not live in righteousness next we have the gospel of peace so peace is a great thing. If you don't have peace, you're gonna be uh, such an easy victim. You're gonna you're gonna fall sort of a victim to all sorts of different negative uh, environmental like uh, moods and attitudes and and just different behaviors. We want to have peace. Being at peace is like just being like Jesus was at peace through you know, pretty much everything he went through, um, whether it was painful or. Uh, a hard decision or it was something that you struggle you really want to try to bring peace because as soon as you don't have peace you're you're off you're off kilter and and the enemy will sneak right in right there and fill you with all these negative things that are not of the of god that are of the enemy you will be filled with um anger and stress and anxiety so we've got to we've got to rock that gospel of peace i'm telling you and that, that's going to give us peace through all these struggles and stress and through all the attacks of the enemy the enemy's going to be doing things that are going going to try to really uh knock you down they're, they're going to hurt you what's up Raymond how you doing brother thanks again for this weekend so yeah it's going to be uh, he's going to be doing things that are going to try to knock you off and that are really going to stress you out so because as soon as you're stressed out you fall real victim and easy to fall right back into sinful nature and sinful behavior so we've got to have that gospel of peace on us and um that's our, our that's how we protect our feet is what it's referencing in the bible but um so we've got truth we've got righteousness we've got peace so far these are three different things in our arsenal so far that are going to help ward off the attacks from the enemy because the enemy like i said is gonna get come at you all the time relentlessly non-stop it's a never never ending battle but do not fret with god and jesus and the and uh, the these uh Things that the Lord has provided for us, we are going to be able to ward off most of this, and we are going to stand firm in Christ on a solid rock foundation. So, next, moving on is the shield of faith. So that's um, a great thing to have a shield. It wards off all the fiery darts. It wards off all the attacks from weapons. It wards off all these critical blows that could happen to you. I'm talking like death blows. You can get hit with an arrow. You can get hit with a sword. So you have a shield to deflect all these uh, negative things and all these hurtful things that are coming at you that could kill or destroy you. Not necessarily physically, but spiritually. So we're going to have that, and we're going to keep faith. We're going to keep faith because we know that the God is good, and we know it's truth, and we know that God will protect us, and God is going to... Uh be our cornerstone and he's going to be what we're going to have our eyes fixed on we're not going to worry about uh lies of the devil and him trying to lead us off the course of of having true faith and belief in jesus and the truth of the gospel so we're going to have that shield anytime that the uh, the enemy tries to bring doubt into your mind ding, we're going to reflect that anytime he tries to bring uh lies to you he's being we're going to reflect that we're going to we're going to be protected by the shield of faith and our true faith and belief and knowledge of knowing what we know is true in the gospel and we are going to uh believe in Jesus and we are going to believe that these things are good and know that God is a good God and has our best intentions for us and know he will protect us. No, he will not 
He, he may allow us to go through things to, to strengthen and build us up, but he is not going to allow the enemy to hurt us. He is that, that's not, that's the, not the case. Our God is a loving God. He's not going to let people hurt, let things hurt you like that. You may be allowed to, to experience things, but, um, Shield of faith. We got to stay firm in our faith in Christ and in the truth of the gospel. And that's going to reflect off any, deflect off any attacks from the enemy. So that's our fourth piece of web, um, piece of defense right there. Then we got the helmet of salvation. What's up, uh, George? How you doing tonight, buddy? We've got the helmet of salvation, which protects our head. Uh, that's a very important thing. We want to have our our headpiece protected because the enemy is going to try to get into our head, and we gotta we gotta protect our brain and and um, our thought process. And we don't want the enemy to get into there, so we gotta have our helmet on at all times. I'm telling you, you really gotta be protected with your helmet because we get lost in our own heads, and that's probably one of our worst enemies. I'm telling you, I get in my head sometimes, and I I can get my make myself get in some real negative thoughts sometimes. But just remember, if you keep on that helm, helmet of salvation and you remember that we have salvation and, and believe in Jesus, then you can guard off all these negative things and you can uh, immediately change up what's going through your mind. You can um, keep your mind on good things, things that are good, things that are righteous, things that are holy, things that are um, loving, kind, patient. Um, we want to we want to keep our head protected and thinking of the right things, thinking of things that are fruit of the spirit. We want to um, not be a uh, Letting the enemy get in our head because the enemy is going to try to get in our head. And we're going to, we, we might fall victim to, to those lies that the enemy is telling us. And that can just to completely throw us off course and completely uh, take us 10 steps back. And we don't want to do this. Some people can completely turn them the other way. And God forbid that happen. And uh, I mean, like, we just got to be in prayer. But you, we got to, we know that we got salvation, salvation through Jesus. So keep Jesus on your mind. Keep God, keep righteous and goodness things on your mind. Um, the helmet of salvation will protect your head. And believe me the enemy is coming for your thoughts and he's going to try to tell, convince you that you're not worthy that you're a failure that um you can't trust people that people are liars but the enemy's a liar you can trust and you can uh, and you can um have good relationships just keep it keep that out of your head keep the enemy from even having an opportunity to get there so we've just definitely um these are the great things. This is uh, me just breaking down the armor of God again because we're talking about attacks from the enemy and it's going to be a constant thing. So we want to definitely have this armor on. The last, most important, another lost connection for a second. I'm glad we got, got it back because uh, I'm feeling it right now. So last and most importantly, and everybody needs to know this, this is how Jesus himself defeated uh, God, Satan to disappear when Satan was trying to tempt him. The sword of the spirit, the word of God, the Bible, through scriptures and through word. we That is our one piece of weaponry, like offensive weaponry we have. And it is a, it'll is bring death blows to the enemy. I'm telling you, it, it will stop the enemy dead in his tracks, just like Jesus did. And I'll go over that in a little bit. I got that um, for us to read over how that Jesus used the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, to get the enemy to run so um that is just such an important thing you need to know your bible you need to know your scriptures you need to be re researched in verse you need to you need to know these things so you can uh, there's in the bible there is something for every situation to deflect the enemy when he's trying to ta attack you for every different situation there is something that's going to lead or guide you it is the the book of life is pretty much what the bible is it, it's going to teach you it's going to guide you it's going to protect you and it's got everything in that we need to know to for this world phone keeps coming unconnected i hope that doesn't keep happening but uh glad you guys are still with us so the the word of god that is the most powerful thing that we have against the enemy the enemy can try and pop in and get, feed you full of lies in your head but boom you can hit him with some scriptures and be like the enemy you're a liar this is truth read this banish from me uh banish from me enemy i rebuke you and Send them scurrying, running off with the word of God. The word of God is so much more powerful than anything that the, that the enemy could try to do to you. Anything that the enemy can do to you, there's nothing that the enemy can do to you that the word of God cannot take care of. Get him to, to vamoose, gone. Because the devil's a liar and he's scared. He's scared of the word. He, he's sitting shaking in his boots now, right? Probably what now that I'm telling people that uh, the word of God is the way to 
to defeat the enemy. He, he might come back, but you just keep going. You keep on trucking and you keep teaching them things. That, you keep using the Bible and you keep uh, spitting scriptures and truth, real truth and, and, and love. And the enemy can't handle that. And he's going to be shut down. And, and God is good and he's going to protect us. And his word says that his word will protect us. So we have that. We have the sword of the spirit. Amen for that, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. That's just such a powerful thing, man. I still got more of my lesson, and it's actually probably taking me longer than I thought I was going to take because I, I just cannot get these things uh, say enough about them, how important these are to ward off attacks from the enemy. So the last thing we have, it's not necessarily a piece of the armor, but it's part and part of all of it, and it's in part of our whole spiritual walk and our relationship with God. Pray. Pray about the any, any things that are happening to you. If the enemy is attacking you, go straight to your father. Go straight to Jesus. Go straight in prayer. And the power of prayer is so deep and so, and it's just so truthful. And it's, um, I'm telling you, man, you, you just got to get in prayer. Uh, the prayer will uh, immediately let God know what's going on. He knows what's going on, but it's it's that uh, intimacy with God. And he's going to know that you really need this help. Uh, it's going to be you speaking, hey, Father, please help me with this situation. I want the enemy to flee from me and uh, trust me the enemy's not the enemy's not going to stand a chance he's going to be scared he, he he's got nothing against god so uh prayer is just a very big factor it's another one of our weapons against the enemy and it's a it's also another just very intimate thing that we have with the lord to to be able to talk to him about our needs and, and about our um things that are going on with us and the enemy is going to be attacking us about this so the enemy is going to attack us relentlessly from all angles. Like I said earlier, I'm just going to go. I'm not going to really get in as deep as I was going to earlier because I, I spent a lot of time on the uh, armor of God. But he's going to attack us relentlessly from all angles. Relationships. So he does not want to see us have healthy relationships. And I'm not talking about just uh, boyfriend and girlfriend. I'm talking about family, brothers, sisters, marriage children our relationship with the lord himself the enemy is coming for that that's the things he wants to see destroyed because there's power in these in these um relationships that we have that the lord has provided us with us and with through those relationships we can grow and teach our family and we can and we can teach people of the gospel and and it's the enemy wants to see that attack because we are weaker when we don't have our family with us when we do not have these relationships that the lord has given us putting us in our lives it weakens us and the and the enemy is non-stop going to try to break the apart he's gonna to try to ruin your marriage trust that from every angle he's gonna make you not think you can trust each other he's gonna speak nothing but lies about it he's gonna bring up those old thoughts in your head you need to have that helmet of salvation on i mean that uh you need to have the helmet of salvation on yes and you just need to protect your head um yeah that's what's up so you just definitely need to um watch the relationship situations it's the enemy trying to break up your relationship relationships are beautiful the lord has provided with us these relationships so we can walk together and have and have people to uh, that we can have a uh, just relationships with like uh it's like the church the church is another one that's a relationship that the the, the enemy is going to constantly be trying to break us apart with and we need to have that strong so we can have fellowship with people we can have a we can have an intimate relationship with our wife we can have somebody that we can serve god with and learn with and grow with we have children that we can uh teach the word of god and and let them teach them to grow up and and know the truth and to be good people so um there's relationships your faith he's going to come for your faith he's going to make you have doubts he's going to make you not try to but he's gonna try to make you think that the bible's a lie he's going to use the world to uh try to prove this he's gonna he's atheistic type of things he's gonna just uh bring th bring things across the t tv screen that might throw uh throw some doubt your directions he's coming for your faith he does not want to see you strong in faith he wants you to not know god so that way he can take hold of you so he's that's another angle that he's gonna come at you from he's gonna try to give you doubts like i said he's gonna try to make you doubt things doubt religion doubt your uh what you're doing in life doubt your relationships he's going to he's going to use a lot of different tools in doing these things too he's going to use media big time especially social media you got to be careful man the enemy's good the enemy's on social media more than any anybody i know that's uh on social media and he's using this thing he's trying to he's trying to fill your head full of negative thoughts you know what i did i took everybody off my social media that, that i thought that maybe 
some people I kept on because I thought maybe there was a chance that we could do, get to them and show them the gospel through a social media. But I got rid of all the negative people that didn't lo love Christ and talked bad about God. And I filled my uh, social media with nothing but people of uh, believers. And it's just like nonstop. It's like spiritual food. Every time you go on, there's people praising the Lord, loving the Lord, spitting scriptures. It's all sorts. It's nothing but goodness. It's like good fruit. And I mean, uh, if you're going to be on social media, you got to be aware that the enemy is going to use the social media to try to lead you astray, to try to keep you away from having time to be on the Bible, to because I mean, like people will be on their phones more than they'll be in the Bible. Take those extra couple minutes when you can be on social media, and yeah, the news is one of the worst. I got that's one of the next things I'm talking about. Take a when you're on your phone, just put your phone aside and get on, open your Bible and get in some scriptures, man, because he's trying to confuse you with social media. But if you are on social media, surround yourself with good people in social media, like um believers people that are preaching uh getting groups that are groups of believers man there's power in that get jo like we have a ugd prayer warriors if you need prayer join our group with the ugd prayer warriors we got all all sorts of different things going on like that just surround yourself with that because he's going to try to confuse you and attack you through social media because that's a big tool nowadays it's probably the most widespread way that the devil can reach a lot of people immediately and do a lot of confusion on it so music music's another big one look at the way the world is right now with music it disgusts me the music that my kids try to listen to i don't allow it but um it's just so blasphemous and it's so worldly and it's so about flesh and so sexual so we we just got to be real careful ourselves that we don't fall victim to that I pretty much cut myself off of secular music because there's barely any nowadays that's appropriate enough to fill your head with. When you're listening to music, you're filling your head with that. Music is a powerful tool. You're supposed to use music to praise the Lord. You you worship the Lord through music and you can sing to the Lord. Well, also, it, you can use it towards negativity and the devil use that as a big tool. Music is out there doing bad things. You got to be careful, especially for your children because your children, let, pay attention to what they're doing, what they're listening to. If they got headphones on, pull that headphone phone out take a listen what are you listening to because the devil is breathing lies non-stop lies i uh, recently i jumped on my my son a nine-year-old son listening to a song uh it, it didn't seem bad but the chorus suicide suicide says i was like what dude not not never again so we gotta just be really careful because the devil is coming at us our kids especially through music and he can even confuse us we do we don't want to give we don't want to start worshiping these wor weird words that the or the weird things that the devil is talking about or you, you using these puppets to fill your head full of evil stuff we just gotta just listen to some gospel put on some christian music i mean like be really aware that the devil is using music and industry to really pollute the world and to fill his agenda. News. News is the next one. News is so full of garbage and so full of lies and so full of agendas and so full of so much evilness and you just got to be real careful you, most of it's watered down and most of it's not truthful most of it's got some other uh goal and that is to throw you off or to get you to believe things that are not the truth that's the enemy using that to try to spread his uh, agendas of weird sexuality to try to spread his agenda for the love of money for all sorts of bad stuff so we just got to be so careful i mean like I, I barely even watch news anymore i mean sometimes i'll look on my phone and see some news things and i'll like scan through it and it's just nothing but garbage or nothing but weird stuff about weird sexual stuff and it's like what the heck this ain't news this is this is a uh, hypnotics man it's people trying to fill your head full of negative stuff so we got to be real careful because the next thing is false teachings there's so much different false teachings out there we just got to be real careful because they're going to try to lead you astray like the devil himself comes as an angel of light and will try to lead you astray through false teachings we got to be careful that what, what we're uh we want to make sure that what we are listening to uh, yes the news is terrible we got to be careful that what we're listening to in teachings is uh um, really from the word of God. And that's the way that I like to base it myself is the word of God. If it's not something that can be found in the Bible, if it's opinionated and it's not opinionated straight from the Bible, I'm not with it. I, I, I like doctrine straight from the Bible. I like the word of God. The word of God is their sword. It's Jesus. That's God. And so that's what we need to put our uh, teaching beliefs in. Movies. Uh, movies, I'm just going to touch on this really quickly. Movies are also another way. It fills your head full of garbage like Mike was talking about last week. 
I still watch some scary movies, but it's true though, man. The, the things that this that the devil is using to put in your mind to put these images. Why do you think probably school shootings started to happen? Why do you think all these bad things happen? Because the devil is filling your head full of the video games. That's another one. Video games full of nothing but killing, full of nothing but murder, evil stuff. You look and sometimes you'll see on the side on a wall some satanic scroll uh, writing and stuff. That happens in cartoons. It happens in movies. It happens. The enemy is out there and he is after your children and he's after us so he's going to use all this stuff and it's i mean like it's flash imagery some of it people probably think that flash imagery imagery stuff is tripping but it's true and it's real and it's out there and it's trying to fill you full of these negative things and if it's go keeps going through your head it's gonna it's gonna make you start thinking this stuff so you just gotta be so careful so careful video games are one of the worst because those your kids are really into movies Music, news, social media, the devil's in it, in it to win it. He runs that stuff. So we just got to really, really, really tread, really tread lightly if we're going on there. And if we do, subliminal, exactly. It's Most of it's subliminal. And it's uh, you don't even really realize what's going on. But like that song I said earlier, suicide, suicide. It may be like a hook that he's talking about something. That, but that's going in your kid's head over and over again. Why do you think there's a problem with kids committing suicide nowadays? Because of garbage like that. That's the enemy. And it's true. And it makes me mad because uh, he's after our children who God gave us. And, oh, uh, it's just it's terrible. So we have to be the teachers to our children and to our other brothers. And this is really happening. So we just got to be careful because this is nonstop coming from the enemy. He's toothless. He can't do nothing to you unless you allow him to do things to you. So that's why you got to be, you got to read your scriptures. You got to be versed. You got to know what's going on. You got to be close with the Bible. You got to know what's up. And you got to just be real careful what you're putting into your head. He's going to try to interfere with our work, situations in work. He's going to try to give us bad attitudes. He's going to try to get us upset at work and throw us off. A lot of us spend a lot of time at work, and we, if we're sitting most days stuck in our head thinking negative thoughts because of our work situation, it's going to be all bad, and the devil wins in that situation. So we've got to uh, do everything we're doing. It says it in the Bible, do it like we're doing it for Jesus. Even if we're upset or it's something that we had a bad day at work, s flip the script, switch it up. And do it for Jesus. Really put that in your head and really think about it. I'm doing this for Jesus right now. And it's I have done that before. I was struggling with roofing before. Not physically struggling, but mentally struggling with it. And when I was doing that, I would start thinking about God and start thinking about good things and start thinking about good fruit. And I'm telling you, it, it helped, dude. It would immediately change your attitude and immediately change your mood. And it's just good stuff. So we got we got, just got to be careful with that because work's a big part of our life. And the Lord knows that and loves that we work. So we just want to do everything that we're doing for the, the God. He's going to enter, try to interfere with our walk with Christ straight off the bat and our ministry. He does not want to see our ministry su succeed. He wants to see this ministry shut down. He wants to see anything spreading the gospel go away. So he's going to do everything from every situation to stir the pot and to bring disbelief in it and to bring... Um, to bring arguments and to bring uh, just to bring negativity into a great thing. The great thing is ministry, whether what whatever it is, is a good thing. If you're preaching the gospel, if you're preaching about Jesus, you may not be the best teacher in the world, but if you're preaching love, I don't care who you are. If you're preaching love and about Jesus and righteousness and goodness and things of the Bible that you do know, it's a great thing. So we just have to. Um, we just have to be careful because we don't want him to destroy our ministries. I know plenty of other brothers that got ministries going on and all sorts of stuff, too. And he's after that. He's after all of them. He wants to shut us down, man. He's been attacking this ministry since day one. So many different angles. But you know what? We're staying faithful and we're staying truthful with the Lord. And we he's been blessing us. Regardless, there's going to be stepping stones and there's going to be stumbling. But he's blessing it. And I know confirmation that we're doing the right thing. So it's just a great thing, man. Um, do not let him interfere. Do not let him get in your head about your walk with what you're doing. If you know it's on the right path and you know that God is blessing you and you know that the Spirit is telling you to do this, keep on doing what it is. Because the more that a ministry grows, whether it's this ministry, another ministry, your church, it's going to be more people that are being bringing to the gospel and more people that are going to be saved in the long run. He's going to try to take hit you with your confidence. I mean, if you have no confidence, you're such an easy victim for any different angle from the from him to get you. You will take that uh 
uh, armor off. I'm telling you, if you have no confidence, you ain't even going to care. So you just got to have confidence in your walk, confidence in your belief, and confidence in your faith. Do not let the enemy get in and tell you lies. He's full of crap. Excuse my language, but baloney. So um, he's like I said, he's going to fill you with lies. One of the biggest tools the enemy is going to use against you, money. Money is garbage. Unfortunately, it's the way the world runs. You want to know why? Because it's worldly. It's fleshly. It's The devil has used money to be able to um, manipulate and give power to people on his uh, terms. Because the, he walks around like he thinks he's the the man on this earth he's got some rain right now and he's confusing people and he's using money power to do it so do not fall victim to love and money yes we need money to survive we have to have money in our society the way it's just the way the cookie crumbles it's the truth but do not start worshiping money do not allow that money to change you use money and be willing to give money i mean like we're supposed to be giving people do not allow money to take over and own you it, that is when the enemy owns you so just do rightness with the when the, when you have money it's because the lord blessed you with that money so uh just um do not allow money to be your stumbling block and to take you away from Christ. So money is very blinding and it, money can do so much damage and it has done so much, so much damage. Money has separated so much of the church. It's, it causes major confliction and religion. That's where most religions go wrong is because their money's hungry. Um, it's all about intimate relationship with it, not religion, but the relationships. So we just got to be careful. Do not allow money to be that uh, factor that separates you from God. Money is nothing. You will never, ha I guarantee there ain't going to be no money in, in heaven. I mean, that, that would be just, I don't see that happening. Um, it's a tool that the enemy is using to uh, control. And so, anyways, that was a long uh, spiel. And I really felt the power right there because these are truthful things. And I've been wanting to get a lot of these off my chest because it angers me. that, um, And I shouldn't have anger, but he's after our children more than anything. And... Uh, I see it every day and I want people to know the truth. So we need to stay in the fruit of the spirit. The fruit of the spirit is another arsenal that we have against Satan. And it's basic things, not basic, the biggest things, love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, being humble and meek, man having good temperance so um i'm telling you if the enemy has no room to come into your mind if you are filling your mind with these things if you're if you're filling your body and you, your whole demeanor is full of the fruit of the spirit there's going to be no room for any of the enemy to come in he's going to come in he's gonna be like oh there's so much love there's so much peace there's so much goodness i can't handle this bam i'm gone especially once you hit him with a bible verse be gone enemy so um, we have that, the fruit of the Spirit. The Spirit is a great thing. If you do not have that Spirit, if you have not been baptized in the Spirit, now is the time to ask the Lord to bring that Spirit into your body. Lord, fill me with the Holy Spirit, Lord. I want the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And get baptized in the Holy Spirit. And you will have you have that this such a great power. It's a great power straight from God. It is a Spirit of God. So we... Um, the fruit of it is just nothing but good stuff. So we that's another arsenal we have, man, and it's a great thing. Uh, love. I'm going to say it again, and that's the most powerful. That's Jesus himself is love. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering. That's being able to get, to get through stuff. Gentleness, being kind and gentle and loving to people, man. Like, it's a great thing to be that way. Doesn't it feel good when somebody's gentle and kind and loving to you? You may be in a bad head state, and somebody comes up and just, man, I love you. What are you, what's going on with you? Bam, immediately that can bring you right back. And that is the Lord right there. That is, that is goodness, man. That's the next one, goodness and faith. If having true belief that we believe in, oh my gosh, the enemy ain't got nothing on that because he don't believe in nothing. He believes in lies, garbage. It's nothing. Um, we need to keep that faith and know that the Lord is uh, the real way and truth, man. And being meek and humble, we are knoweth nothing without God. We are nasty, dirty, soiled rags. We are. We just need to be meek. The meek will inherit the earth. People that do not think they are better than other people, 
we just got to be those people. We are not better than anybody. I'm telling you, we're not better than anybody on this earth. I don't care if they're murderers or sin. We are all sinners. And they may do worse things, but nobody's better than anybody else. So, um, yeah, what's up? It's nice to see you, Raul. Uh, glad you joined us. Um, we are not better than anybody else. So we just need to stay humble. And these are different other ways that we are going to destroy the enemy's attacks. The enemy can try to attack you from all those angles. We need to be aware of all those different angles that he's come at us that I said earlier have our armor on at all times i'm talking sleeping working doing anything we do have that armor on with the fruit of the spirit there is no room for the enemy's attacks i'm telling you you are going to be so protected and have the word of god and god with you and the spirit of god that you're just going to be there's nothing the enemy's going to run like a he's going to run scurry and i'm telling you he's got nothing against the power of god he's defeated already and he knows he's defeated he's going to try to take you to, and have you be defeated with him we don't have to be defeated we can be winning we can win immediately through christ Whew. revelations 12:11 and they overcame him by the blood of the lamb. Amen for that. Praise the Lord. The blood of the lamb, the sacrifice Jesus Christ gave for us. We overcame the devil through that. And by the word of their testimony. This is so powerful. And we have went over this in past weeks. And they love not their lives unto death. We need to not love our life, our worldly lives, the worldly way. We need to love everything we have through Christ. But what did I say right before that? And by the word of their testimony, that is another weapon that you have against the enemy right there is testimony. And it's one of the most powerful weapons we have. Testimony. You could take testimony. Uh, where I'm from, I come from gangbanging and drugs and uh, uh, streets. But I've been there. I've done that. So who's more going to respect that and listen to that? People that are in that situation right now than somebody who's been there. And through a powerful testimony like me or Anon, somebody who's made it through that muck and changed and ha loves God, knows God so much that we're not perfect. We're far from perfect, but we have an amazing testimony that can fill other people with knowledge to see that we can make it through this stuff. That is just going to attack the enemy because they, he's trying to make people believe that they can't, that it's hopeless, that they're not going to be nothing, that, that, that they're failures. So testimony is so powerful. You're, test, you're testifying about your belief and your faith and your love for God and how truthful it is and what it's done for you. I mean, you tell this to the masses and you can make major differences. I'm telling you, testimony is such a, such a powerful thing, man. It's uh, so powerful, man. And it doesn't have to be a long, drawn-out testimony. Just let people know what God has done for you and what what has happened through this and how God has blessed you just through believing and having faith and walking with him. Man, it's so powerful. So, um, yeah, that's definitely another thing. So we have testimony. We have the fruit of the Spirit. We have the Holy Spirit himself. We have the Word of God. We have that armor. These are all going to protect us against these non-stop attacks from the enemy. He's going to grow tired of trying to because every he's going to be like, psh, 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 just slapped around. It's going to be just a slap vest on the devil. He, he ain't going to be able to do nothing to you, man. And he's going he's gonna to get sick and tired and he's going to go try to find somebody else who's weak. And that's why we need to keep going with our testimony and our gospels to try to help those people in those situations. I'm almost done here, guys. I've got a couple more scriptures, but um, Ephesians 6.12, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rules of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. So like I said, it's not something that we can really see ourselves, and it's not something against each other here. It's not like war against me against China, or me against uh, Germany, or me against that dude. It's war against spiritual warfare. It is war against principles, against good things. It's a war against what's right and what's righteousness. That is what the war is against. And it's again, and it's powers, it's spiritual powers, and it's wicked powers, and it's things that are going to try to get to you from another whole realm and, and it's real though it's real you may not even be able to see it but this stuff is real and spiritual wickedness it's evil it's sin that's what the war is against sin and uh we're not wrestling against flesh and blood that may be part of the warfare that the the sin is creating is creating you to have to have warfare against our fleshly brothers and sisters but it's not really the war we're fighting we're fighting the war with the enemy and with the spirits and the evil stuff so we just got to remember that and that's why we got to stay on the right side of the light and uh, know the bible 
and know these things are truth because we're getting attacked from things that we can't see. That's that's tough. You have to have you have to be protected. It's not something that you can physically protect yourself from just by watching and trying to block their shots. No, you can't see it. So you got to you got to know your stuff and you got to stay right so you can be protected. God's going to protect you. First John 4, 1. Beloved, believe not every spirit. But try the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into this world. And that's true. The devil is going to try to fill you full of lies, full of people that you should be able to trust. False prophets. It could be church uh, leaders. It could be all sorts of different doctrine. It could be presidents. It could be uh, people that are in power that you really trust their words, celebrities, all sorts of things. Um these are false prophets. If they're not speaking the truth and they're trying to lead you astray from what is the truth and what is and what's gospel it, the gospel is. What's up, Jesse? How you doing, brother? If they are not teaching you the truth, they are false prophets. And they are going to be um we just got to be real careful because we can't believe every spirit and everything that we hear, man. And it's going to, um, we've got to know that it's really from the Bible and really coming from God. Pray and meditate on it. If you don't know the truth, uh, you got to, uh, be silent and still and pray on it. Like I said, sometimes, you know, it's calm. You get immediate confirmation and you know that the Lord's talking to you and it's of something good. So you can act on that. But if you're not sure, or it doesn't seem right, don't jump into it. That can cause so much uh, ripple effect of bad things. I'm just telling you, just be careful because not every spirit is good and not everything you're going to hear is necessarily from the spirit of God. It's The enemy is going to try to attack all this if you from these angles too. So... Please share this thing tonight. Also, go down in the bottom corner of your screen and hit share tonight. It's a really good message. I'm really feeling the Lord, the Holy Spirit tonight, and I really feel that this message needs to be shared. So uh, just hit the share button on the bottom corner. I love all you guys. Last scripture I have, you guys. 2 Corinthians 13 through 14. Wait, I missed one part. I'm going to go back into something after that, actually. So give me a, a couple more minutes of your time. 2 Corinthians 11, 13 through 14. For such people are false apostles, deceitful workers, masquerading as apostles of Christ. That's powerful. Masquerading as people for God, apostles. That's a close, close um, relationship. That's really somebody you should be able to trust. But, but that's who the, the, the enemy is going to masquerade as. He's going to try to make you believe that these things are truthful. And if they're not from the Bible, they, they're most likely not going to be. So just be careful. And no wonder, for Satan himself masquerades as an angel of light. He's going around trying to make people think that he's the man, that he's a, a good entity, that he's going to be able to save you, that he's going to be able to do great things for you in this world, maybe. But that's nothing. That's the only thing you're going to gain is losing your salvation. If it is not, it is not surprising then if his servants also masquerade as servants of righteousness. That's in him, the that's evil spirit. That's demons. That's all sorts of different entities that the that the enemy has that he can send out doing his foul things masquerading as they are supposed to be righteous people false prophets false uh servants they're going to act like they're doing great things they're going to be a lot of self-righteousness in that stuff but the bible will guide you and the holy spirit will guide you so stay close to god i'm telling you and keep your armor on keeping the fruit of the spirit and um man it's just such a and keep that testimony going so um their end will be what their actions deserve. That's the last part of that scripture. So that said, that says it all in a nutshell right there. That's what they're going to get. They're going to get this world, whatever they're, the garbage they're trying to spit out right there. So the, um, and that's nothing. That's not eternal life. That's not going to be up in heaven at the kingdom. Last thing I forgot to share with. It's on my computer right here. Like I said earlier. Jesus himself was tempted by Satan. I'm going to read you through, read through this and I'm going to be done for the night. Matthew 4, 1 through 11. Satan tempts Jesus. Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. He was led up there to be tempted by the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights afterward, he was hungry. He was very hungry, I'm sure. Like more hungry than any of us have ever been. Now when the tempter came to him, this is the enemy, the devil. This is the enemy. He's doing the same things to you. He said, if you are the son of God, command that these stones become bread. But he answered and said, it is written. That is the sword of the spirit right there. I'm going to kind of jump in as I'm reading this. 
But he answered and said, Jesus is saying this to Satan. It is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Boom, right there. The enemy was shut down on that one. The enemy was trying to uh, get him to prove that he was the son of God. To prove He doesn't have to prove anything. And he... Then the devil took him up into the holy city, set him on the pinnacle of the temple. That's a really high spot. And said to him, if you are the son of God, throw yourself down. For it is written, that's Satan himself using scripture try like just like in those last scriptures i said trying to uh confuse and, and trying to uh masquerade and, and use the bible for himself if you are the son of god throw yourself down for it is written he shall give his angels charge over you and in their hands they shall bear you up l lest you dash your foot against the stone so the enemy is using the word himself to try to confuse to try it. So that's why we really need to know God and really need to know the, the truth in the word. Because the enemy is using the word to try to confuse Jesus right there. Jesus said to him, again, Jesus said, it is written again, you shall not tempt the Lord your God, which we should not do. We should not tempt the Lord your God. But that's the second time that Jesus himself stops the devil dead in his tracks because he said it was written. He used scripture. He used the sword of the spirit. That is a very powerful weapon that we have against the enemy. Again, the devil took him up on an exceedingly high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. So he took him up probably to the highest mountains and said, check all this out, Jesus. So it's like Jesus didn't already know. And he said to him, all these things I will give to you if you will fall down and worship me. And I'm sure that that's what Satan says to all these people that are lost and that are getting all this world fame and publicity. And you know, a lot of these celebrities that sell their soul to the devils, they openly say they have sold their soul. Because I believe that the devil is going to use the same tools that he used again, tried to use against Jesus on weak people like humans. And a lot of them have fallen victim to it. So I believe that to the fullest, the devil has made this offer to a lot of people on this earth. But they do not have the word. They do not know the scripture and they fall, probably fall victim to him all these things i will give you if you fall down and worship me this is the, the what satan was saying also to jesus then jesus said to him away with you satan for it is written i love that. that's the probably the best thing that jesus ever says for it is written you shall worship the lord your god and him only you shall serve straight scriptures straight out of the word of god then the devil left him, and behold, angels came and ministered to him. The devil took off. The devil couldn't handle the truth. So that is how powerful the Bible is. Jesus himself got the devil to scram when the devil was trying to tempt him in his weakest moment, 40 days without food. That's I can't go a day without food. Not really, though, but uh, I'm just playing on that. But um, I wouldn't. I know the scripture enough to not be tempted like that either. But um, Jesus used it, the scripture himself and the devil ran. So take that as some food for thought on how powerful the word of God is, how powerful it is. And just know that the enemy is going to be coming at you from every angle. He just tried to come at Jesus from uh, many different twisted angles. And uh, yeah, hashtag hangry. That, that's real. Eat a Snickers. Um, so... Um, that's what I got for you tonight, man. Just know that that enemy is out and he's trying to get you and he's going to be trying to attack you. And like I said, please share this message tonight. I really feel the spirit tonight and um, I really think that this message is a great one to share. Um, this is UGD Ministries, man, and uh, the enemy ain't got nothing on us with the power of God, with our armor on. We have to have that armor armor of God on at all times. So just be protected, man. Know your know, know the Bible. Have a relationship with the Lord and testimony. Tell your testimony. Don't be scared of your, to, of, of your testimony. Don't be scared to um, tell people what God has done for you because it's so powerful that it could change somebody's life. It could change somebody's and could completely lead them to Jesus through your testimony. So it's a great thing. The enemy is attacking all the time. But like I, we've said many times on Unity Ministries, he's toothless. Not toothless, but toothless. More power in the tooth. But um, he can't do anything to you. The Lord gives us he's, he's without weapons and some ways to be protected. So just know that. Know that. Rebuke the enemy in Jesus' name. Uh, we've also got uh, Written Word Wednesdays, 7 p.m. with Keenan. We have Fruitful Fridays with Anon, uh, 7 p.m. on Fridays. This is UGD Ministries. I'm going to end this in some prayer. I hope you guys like the message tonight. Uh, don't be scared of that enemy. we got a powerful God.
and he loves you. So um, I'm going to end this in some prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we just... We just thank you for the weaponry you've given us, Lord. We just thank you for protecting us, Lord. We thank you for giving us a chance to of something to defeat this non-stop attack from this enemy. Lord, you are so much more powerful than the enemy. And Lord, we just are so thankful for that. And that you love us so much. And that you have goodness in the eyes for us. Uh, everything that you do for us, Lord, is good. And we just uh, need to realize that and appreciate that, Lord. And um, enemy has no place near us that has no place in our hearts he has no power over us lord we rebuke the enemy in your precious son's mighty name and the power of the blood of jesus christ we rebuke the enemy and all of his attacks lord just protect everybody lord open up their eyes lord and let them know that how powerful your word is lord jesus your son himself made the devil run with his word so lord just hopefully open up eyes with that lord and let them know how powerful the word is and how much you love them lord we just thankful for everything thank you so much for everything you do for us lord and um in jesus mighty powerful name we pray amen that's what i got for you guys tonight um i love all y'all ugd ministries uh most high monday with your boy newborn hit that share button peace god loves you